But anyways, let's talk about uh, what we had going on this uh, this past week as far as processors. I know some guys, some of you guys had a few questions um, on what we covered as far as the new Emotiva RMC1 preamp processor. It's a five thousand dollar sixteen channel processor, which is a pretty killer deal. Assuming that uh, you know you got a big enough room to fit 16 channels, and if you take into consideration the next available kind of processor at the same price range with that many channels, is I think the Trinov at 16 channels. That's also uh, that's that's twenty five thousand dollars actually. The Trinov is twenty five grand for 16 channels. So I mean, so you're getting. 16 channels for five grand and it, it's expandable up to 28 channels if you were to expand the rmc1 to 16 channels you're looking at about 7100 dollars i believe each module is something like 700 dollars each module carries four channels per at about 700 bucks each so if you were to fill in the uh three three expansion bays on the back of the rmc1 you know five thousand plus the extra extra money for the each module $7,100 so that's a pretty good deal um Trinov is uh you know they're both kind of like PC based architecture architecture wise the Emotiva runs off of Linux it's got a special flavor of Linux it's fully differential so if you really want to benefit from getting the cleanest sounding audio out of the Emotiva you will need fully differential amps to really utilize the the noise rejection the noise rejection capabilities of the processor and of the amplifier so it's not like you can buy it's not like you can get the rmc1 and just get any amplifier that has xlrs you need to get an amplifier that's fully differential if you want to want to get the the best noise rejection so you got to take that into consideration as well so if you're going to drop the money on the rmc you got to drop the money on the amplifier as well Luckily, Emotiva does carry uh, the DRC line, which is fully differential, which will give you the best noise rejection. So you got to keep that in mind as well. And uh, they're expensive, those amps. I believe the DRC3, which I have, I put in the video, it starts at $2,100. It's not super expensive, but uh, it's not exactly cheap. Usually uh, fully differential amps, they're, they cost a lot of money. But that's uh, definitely affordable for what you're getting. But anyways, I know a lot of you guys um, were asking to check out, you know, certain features on the Emotiva. What kind of bugs were going on with it. But for like my, my normal use case scenario, you know, I got the RMC1. It's hooked up to the projector. It's hooked up to the Sony 695ES. That's in the main theater room. And room two is in my equipment room slash lobby area, which I have the Sony A9G in. So if you were gonna use dual outputs, there's a HDMI one, HDMI two, there's zone one and zone two. So the biggest issue that I have with the RMC right now is um, if you're feeding two separate zones, apparently this only happens with Sony TVs. I'm gonna have to check this out with the Samsung that I have in there as well. But I, I guess if you're hooking up two HDMIs at the same time, um, you'll get video that kind of cuts in and out. Audio stays fine, but video, kind of cuts in and out so if I'm watching a movie in the theater and if I'm entertaining I have people in the in the lobby area and maybe they're just drinking beer or something like that or eating some popcorn whatever you have what's going on over there um, the video will get kind of like all garbled it will just sound like pure sh it just makes a kind of a loud, loud garbled mess and then in the theater if you're watching in the movie the video cuts in and out like it turns black then it comes back turns black comes back but yet the audio still remains the same so that's what happens if you're running the projector and a secondary display in the other room at least that's what happens if I'm using the Oppo 203 this is with the Oppo 203 and with the Panasonic uh, UB9000 um, I haven't tried it with the Apple TV yet so that's one issue that I've ran across Apparently this only happens with Sony displays, so it might be something with the um, HDMI EDID. So the, the, the TV might be talking to the uh, RMC1, giving it, throwing some, you know, throwing some uh, different codes or whatever. So that's one thing that uh, I've noticed 
Um, like I said, I actually, right before we started the stream, I was talking to the technician at Emotiva. You know, he didn't have any answers. I didn't have any answers. The only thing that I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to try a different television with it. So maybe, maybe the Samsung TV I have in there will work better with it. Although the Samsung TV I have is only 1080p and it's only 24 inches. So we'll see what happens with that. So that's one thing. Um, that's one thing that kind of bugs me about it. Although sometimes if you're, if you've got your projector hooked up alongside the, your secondary display, there are times where it does work. So I will, I will say that sometimes 80% of the time it doesn't work. And then you get about 20% of the time it does work. And then with the other eight pre pros that I've had in there, hundred percent of the time it never worked. So at least the Emotiva has a, a, a small percentage of the time that it, that it could possibly work. So just keep that in mind as of the, as of right now in, in its firmware version, uh, which is uh, 1.4.2, I believe, is the firmware version that we're on. There is another issue, well, not really another issue, but the RMC is a little sluggish. It can be a little bit slow if you're navigating through menus. If you wanna go from like, say you wanna switch your, um, do your speaker setup. You want to go from like large to small. It takes a little while. You know, you click over on the remote. It might take about three, four seconds over to click over. And if you're switching from up and down in the menus from large to small, it takes about a second or two. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't know what to say about that, man. Like that, menus are slow. They're slow. As far as I've been, I've been told that that's kind of the fastest it's going to get. Like I know people have some issues with that. I mean, I sort of have an issue with it, but I mean, if um, if it's just navigating through menus and UI, it's not like terrible. It's not like a deal breaker, but I can see it. I can see how if you're spending five grand, it could be a little bit of a nuisance. Of a nuisance, but I mean, uh, sound quality wise, it sounds perfectly fine for sound. Just the UI is a little bit laggy, but you get used to it after a while. I mean, I've had it for like a week or so, a little over a week. I've had it, and I mean, once you get your settings all dialed in. You're not really switching back and forth too often in the menus. So that's one, that's another thing. So HDMI, you got slow, the slow menu. Number three, if you're switching from, from different sources, if you're watching a movie and you want to switch from HDMI one to HDMI two, there can be a little, little slight pop in your speakers. It's not enough of a pop to make it like blow your speakers, but you'll hear a little crackle. Other than that, I mean, I think that's really it, man, for bugs that I've noticed. I know a lot of you guys have been like, hey, why don't you go check out the Emotiva Lounge, check out the AVS forums, and read some of the issues those guys have been having over there. But, I, you know, I didn't do that. I wanted to kind of, like, stick to my normal usage, where it was um, just a projector, just a TV, just my normal sources, just use it as, uh, as how I normally use things. I didn't go extensively and try to listen to music and try different things with PCs or anything like that. But for me, those were kind of like the main three things I noticed. There's, um, what else? Also, if you kind of want to overlap, so if you want to run your, all your speakers as small, so let's say you're in the settings anyways. So if you're setting up your speakers as small and you set your crossovers to like whatever you want to set it at, 80 hertz, 90 hertz, 110, 120, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to pick. You can set your speakers to whatever it is. Eight, let's just say 80 hertz, for, for instance. You can set it at 80 hertz. And if you want to set your, your LFE, your subwoofer, is at like 90 hertz, then you can't do that. So it's either you set it at, you set your, your crossover points at 80 hertz, then whatever that's at, then the subwoofer takes over from there. So you can't have like 80 hertz for your speakers and 120 hertz for your subwoofer. So it's always whatever whatever crossover point your main speakers are at that's where the subwoofer goes at so if you have your main speakers at 80 let's say you have your your height speakers at 120 then i believe it, it cuts off at the lowest point so it's always going to be at, at like the lowest point it's kind of messed up that way i think like the the whole base management like i was talking to the technician earlier and uh apparently there's going to be like a fix for that so it'll be more It'd be easier to figure out like it took me a while to figure out why i wasn't getting a lot of bass watching some of these movies i think i was watching alita 
and I, I gave Alita like a low rating for, for bass because I had, I had it set up as LFE rather than mono. So it wasn't getting a lot of bass. So I had to go into the menus and um, I had to set the subwoofer to mono. And that's when I got like a ton, of, ton more bass. Because the bass would kick in after you set your crossover points. So, so if you guys have an RMC1, you got to kind of take that into consideration. So uh, I learned that the hard way, you know, after I was like, hey, man, Alita had like, I gave like, Alita like a seven for audio or something like that because bass sucked. But then uh, I remember I had to put a post up saying that it actually did have pretty good bass after I, I fixed the menu settings. Because on like most receivers and preamps, um, there's always an option for like subwoofer for small or sorry, subwoofer for off or just straight LFE or LFE plus mains. So this one was just like LFE, I put an LFE and it just didn't work. It just didn't sound right. So that was just like one issue. I don't know if it's an issue or not, but I know they're going to address it though. Other than that, man, um, ARMC1, it's a little sluggish. Dual HDMI outs. Doesn't really work that well. At least not for my, not for my, not for my scenario. Um, base management could use a little bit of work, but I think they are working on that. The menu speed. I've been told that's kind of the quickest it's gonna get. Turning on, turning on the unit from uh, from off. If you keep, I believe if you keep, if you keep zone two on, while the unit's turned off, then you can turn it on. It, it turns up really quick. But if I think if zone two is turned off, and you turn it on, from from being totally off, it takes about a minute or so to turn on. So there's that as well. I'm not sure why that is, but it just it is what it is. So it is a little slow to turn on. It's like it's like a minute, but if you want to kind of negate that, I believe you have to have Zone Two turned on. From like a sound quality standpoint, though, for for the RMC, mm, I prefer it. I do prefer it over like the Marantz 8805. It does sound does sound better. Um, slightly more brighter, just straight out of the box. Each channel does have an 11 band PEQ, so you can adjust your your gains, your your um, your Q. So you could do all that stuff if you have uh, if you got Roomy Q Wizard, you get yourself a calibration mic. It's you can set that up. I had to do that with the Rotel 1582, I believe it was 152 or 1585. I forgot the model number, but I had to do that with the Rotel. That will take you some time if you're going to do all eight seats, or if you're just going to do the main seat. It might only take you a couple of hours, but just straight out of the box with the RMC, I want to say it's a little brighter, a little bit more detailed than than the 8805. I just didn't like the 8805. Even when I had that, I just didn't like it that much. Um, but definitely much better sounding than uh, than the Morant's offering. There's no time frame from Dirac for Dirac for the Dirac update. I, I asked the uh, tech that. He said uh, there was no uh, no update on that. So I have no idea. I have no information on that right now. But I am kind of interested to see how they implement Dirac because there are three independent subwoofer outputs on the RMC1. So the newest iteration of Dirac is supposed to have multiple subwoofer um, correction. So that that would eliminate a lot of the um, you know the, the need to buy mini DSP if you want to correct for three separate subwoofers or more separate or more subwoofers. You know I believe mini DSP sell, sells their mini DSP four. You can do like the four or eight subs independently if you want to, but depending on which version of direct this one gets, you'll be able to hopefully correct for three subwoofers straight out the gate. Or if you want to add more channels, maybe you can do more subwoofers. So we'll see how that how that pans out. But like I said, as of right now, there's no, uh, there's no time frame for the room correction update. What else we got? IMAX enhanced. I was also told that the processing in it, obviously it could do IMAX enhanced, but they have no I think, I think they're looking into doing IMAX Enhanced, and there is enough processing power to do DTSX Pro. DTSX Pro will let you do up to 32 independent channels. So that could be something big, since the processor can do 28 channels. I'm assuming that that's gonna come at some point in time, because doing 28 independent channels for DTSX Pro, that could be kind of a big thing. But yeah, man, every, everything's really good. I, I still prefer the Audio Control M5 over the RMC one, just for the fact that it does have better room correction in it, so it did integrate better with my room. Um, but straight out of the gate, straight out of the box, if all you're gonna do is set your levels, and if you're just gonna set your 
your distances, which isn't that hard to do. This is just, it's really good sounding just straight out of the, straight out of the box. There wasn't too many, you know, the bugs aren't enough to be like a deal breaker for me. I don't know what you got, what the other guys are using it for in different forms and what they're complaining about, but just for watching straight movies and, you know, navigating the menu every once in a while, you know, I think I, I, I go into the menus just to, just to check if my, uh, the subwoofer levels are okay if I'm, if I'm doing a review or something like that. Um, other than that, man, no, I don't really dig into the menus that much. HDMI switching. I don't know if I brought that up yet though. HDMI switching is, if you're a projector user, you know HDMI switching takes about four or five seconds. Like it takes a little bit. So that, um, I don't notice a problem with HDMI switching. It's always been the same. Whether it's uh, the audio control or the dead on of the Marantz, HDMI switching is perfectly fine. But yeah, man, that's it though, man. Um, if you're on the fence of buying the RMC one, I mean, I would buy it. I mean, just, just to have the, the ability to upgrade to 28 channels, especially if you have a large room, just out of the box though, it's 16 channels. I mean, how many people have room for 16 channels? I barely have enough room for 11 channels, but having 16 channels for 5Gs, and if you can upgrade to HDMI 2.1 or 2.5 or 3.0 in the future, hopefully they're gonna support it that far along into the future where you're gonna get those modules. That's, that's an awesome thing, because NAD came out with their M17 like four or five years ago, and it's still kicking right now the the way that these things works the, they work is that like the body the actual chassis is actually just the shell it's just like a pc it's just a shell every time you get a new module everything is on everything is on the module so like the uh the graphics card just like on the nad from what i was told all the graphics card is actually on the actual hdmi module so 1.4 it came out with and then they upgraded it to 2.0 so all you got to do is just swap out the card so if there's a new card a 2.1 card that comes out when 2.1 really becomes relevant, all you're gonna have to do is to just buy the new module for 700 bucks or so, and just pop it in there. So you're gonna be good for the next few years. If you need, um, like I said, more channels, if you got a huge room, if you got a big auditorium for a theater, home theater, just drop it on the 700 bucks. You got another extra four channels. You're at 60, you're at 20 channels already for another $700. If you want to add more subwoofers, you can buy, you can assign those new cards for an extra four subwoofers, that that's pretty awesome for 700 bucks. So I mean, expandability is kind of an awesome deal. I know a lot of people have issues with why do why do these things cost five thousand dollars? It's like uh, it's like you spend three hundred dollars on a receiver. Yeah, man, it's got it's got you know it's got Odyssey, it's got like uh, Spotify, it's got all those other all the other crap that you're probably not going to use. You're probably just gonna whip out your phone and Bluetooth your to your to your Bluetooth speaker, anyways. I don't know if you guys ever try to use like Spotify or internet radio on your receivers or not, but fucking it kind of sucks. So I mean, if you're really into audio, you want a processor that just does audio. You want to, you want it to do audio good. You want it to just pass through your your main HDR formats. You know, your Dolby Vision, HDR10, 10, 10 Plus. That's all you really need it to do. You just want it to sound good. If you want other extra extra bullshit like fucking like streaming and all this other stuff, go buy yourself a Sony or buy yourself a cheap Anki or something like that. That's what those are good for. That's why receivers exist. But if you got the spare change, you could buy a nice processor and you got you got some quality amplifiers, you got a quality system. The five thousand dollars is kind of a drop in the bucket if you look at the bigger picture. You know, I don't want to sound like a like an a hole or nothing like that, saying that five thousand dollars is affordable because I get it. It's 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 expensive, but. I mean, if, you, if you've invested in some really expensive speakers, you've invested in $1,000 Blu-ray players and, you know, $10,000 projectors or $4,000 OLED TVs or $7,000 OLED TVs, if you've got a big one, um, $5,000 for a processor, that's, that's not that much, especially if it's upgradable and it's going to last you a few years into the future. So, like, that, that, that's my thought on that. Because like, I see a lot of, um, a lot of thumbs downs, um, just like people, people complaining, like, why would you spend a lot of money for a processor? It's because you, you value audio, you know, you got, you got your audio files out there that have no problem with the uh, drop the money. And usually in a lot of cases, like if you're spending a lot of money for a processor or amplifier, it sounds good. It definitely sounds better than like a 5,000 or sorry, it definitely sounds better than like a $500 ramp and it hundred percent sounds better than a $200 receiver or a $500 receiver or a thousand dollar receiver. There's a, there is a, a lot of diminishing returns, of course, but um, 
from everything that I've had in my home theater that I've gotten to review, the best ones that I've heard so far were at least like five grand and up or so. I mean, I reviewed the hotel recently, which was like $2,400. That sounded good, but definitely not $5,000 good. Maybe once it gets room correction on the hotel, maybe it'll sound as good as the as the Emotiva, but there's a difference between dropping five grand and $200 on a receiver, so just my thoughts on that.